This will be a guide on how to use collections for the Trumia Smart Pro. Collections are a robust way to create a smaller curated list of games. If we take a look at the Miu Mini Plus here, there's a lot of systems and literally hundreds of games per system. And it may make picking what to play a little bit difficult. You might get some analysis paralysis. But yeah, if you take a look at this example collection here, I'm using Stock OS on this Trumia Smart Pro. We have a small list of games to pick from. And then you can launch it. Now when you exit, you exit back into the collection. So you can have multiple collections, each with its own icon, background image, and so forth. And it's a very handy way, in my opinion, to make a small list of games. Alright, why don't we go to the PC and I'll walk you guys how to do it. I'm going to hold the power button for a few seconds to power off. Tapping the power button will just put it to sleep. Remove the micro SD card. That took a few seconds to find the reader, but I'm using my Samsung Pro Plus reader. It's pretty good. You can use whatever method you want, your phone. Okay, once you plug it into the PC, you may get a pop-up message saying there's a problem with the drive. You can safely ignore this message unless you actually have some corrupted data. In which case, you can try to scan it. Uh, the Trimia Smart Pro uses a FAT32 partition, which Windows can read. Alright, so to start with, we'll be downloading the Collagen app and then installing it on our SD card. We're going to use this app to create a collection because manually creating a collection is kind of a headache. And then we'll edit it to make it look a little bit nicer. And then we'll change two lines of code to make it work on stock OS. So the account name is RKR87 and the app is Collagen. We're going to click on the releases section on the right hand side here. And then thanks to a recent update, we can use this with stock OS. So as of this video, the latest version is 2024, September 13th. We're going to click on the collagen.zip file. All right. Once that's downloaded, we're going to extract the contents using a program like 7-zip. And then we're going to go inside the folder and this is the app folder. We're going to open up our computer. Go to our SD card. We're going to go into the apps folder. And then we're going to copy the collagen folder over. And then that's pretty much it. We're going to close out. We're going to safely eject the micro SD card. Now we're going to put the SD card back into our device. We press R, we're going to navigate to app, and we see the collagen app here. We're going to start it up. Now we can see here, uh, it's very simple, and I really like this app because it makes creating collections a lot easier. We're going to select one, so we're going to go to one and press A, and then press start. We're going to enter a display name. I'm going to type in poke for Pokemon to keep it nice and short. All right, now we'll be entering the initial search terms to create our collection. So what the app will do is whatever words you put in, it will look through all the ROMs and whatever ROM files have that word, it will add to the collection. But since we're going to be creating a Pokemon collection, let's just write in Pokemon. And press start. And then it should have created the collection. At this point, we can press menu to exit out. Now let's go back to the best tab. And as we can see here, we have a collagen collection. We can change the icon later. When we go in, we're going to see every single game with the name or word Pokemon in it. So if you click on a game, it's not going to start. 
as you can see, none of these games are working. And then there'll be a very easy fix to that. So why don't we turn off the console and go back to the PC. Okay, we're back on the PC. Once again, you can safely ignore that message. We're going to go navigate to our SD card. And then bare minimum, here's the fix. So here is our folder that we created, Pokey. We're going to open up launch.sh. We're going to delete this line of code. So what this line of code does is it'll look in the config.json file for each emulator. And then it'll try to find what the launch file is. So if we take a look at this one here, it has a field called launch and it's supposed to launch launch.sh. The crossmix version uses different versions. But anyways, I think this line of code here causes a problem. So we're just going to delete this. And then for here, we're going to change dollar sign launcher into just launch.sh. Now this is for stock OS. If you're using crossmix, please leave this file alone. It will work perfectly fine. For stock OS, all the launch files are named launch.sh. Now, if you added a emulator from crossmix where the launch file is not named launch.sh, you may want to change it to launch.sh to make it work. But for now, this will be compatible with stock OS as is. We're going to hit control S to save. Now before exiting, we can look at the config.json file. And if you want the collection to be called something else, you can change this label field here. And we'll be changing the background and icon and icon selected images. Here we can look for an icon file. Let's look, for, look up Pokeball PNG. Now obviously these are trademark images. These are copyright images. So the legality of this is questionable at best. But considering most of the people are pirating ROMs, I don't think they will care too much. But if you do care, I would suggest you make your own icon if you want. All right, we can use this one. Verify human and download. Oh no. It'll expose me. Okay. So let's open this up. I'm going to use GIMP because GIMP is free and I've been using it for a while now. I'm broke. <laughs> I got the money for Photoshop. Right, we're going to scale this down to 500 by 500. That's a decent size for an icon. And you kind of want some empty space around it. All right, this looks pretty good. We're going to export this as bg-pokemon.png. So it has to be a PNG file. Now, one thing I would recommend doing is for the icon selected, just to make a border. We're going to select all, and then we're going to stroke selection. And that looks pretty good. So you can have all your icons consistent, and you can kind of make this little border to make it visible which collection you're picking if you have more than one. We're going to export this as bg-selected dash pokemon.png so i would recommend putting your collection name at the very end so you can differentiate your background and icon files very easily at a glance if you want to back that stuff up all right now let's pick a background image let's look up pokemon wallpaper you can pick one that looks cool to you this bubble sort of one looks pretty cool Oh, this looks pretty cool too. All right, let's... Save the image here. Let's open this up with GIMP. All right, it's a 1080p. You want it to be a 720p image. Once again, it has to be a PNG file. So we're going to export it as background-pokemon.png. Oh, 
I also see icon. Whoops. <laughs> well, I can fix this. Don't worry, fellas. Okay. I keep making that mistake. This is like my fifth time recording this, by the way. And uh, for some reason, my brain is hardwired to name it icon or background instead of icon. I have no idea why. Okay, now once we have those three files, we're going to select them and copy them over into our collection. And then we're going to change the icon, icon salt, and the background field. So we're going to do icon-pokemon.png. Make sure there are no typos, otherwise it will not select the icon. That looks good. Icon selected-pokemon.png. And then for background bg pokemonpng All right, I believe there are no typos. Okay. Oh, there's another thing too. Let's say you want to manually edit your collection. You can use the Collagen app, but I find it a little bit cumbersome. So one thing we can do is just go in and delete the ROMs. And this is how you can manually add games as well if you want. So the way they do it is they create shortcuts to the actual ROM. So if we take a look here, it's a text file. And the name here is the name of the game that you want to display. And then inside the text file is the full address of the ROM. So as you can imagine, if you are typing this manually, even just copying and pasting this part and copying and pasting the game name, it's a little bit tedious. But yeah, we can delete these. Say you want to keep your list very short. Go to Game Boy Color, just delete all of these. And then let's say you want to add box art as well. All the box art goes into the images folder and it has to match the name of the text file. So if you have a scraper, you can use that. I am using the tiny best set go and that comes with box art. So I'm just going to drag and drop it into here. Just remember this name has to match the name of the text file. So if you go take a look once again, this name here, the name of the text file has to match the name of the image. If you name this something shorter, let's say you want to get rid of the USA Europe then you got to make sure that the image file matches that. All right, now we have box art. We have a background, we have an icon. We're going to eject and check out what it looks like on our Trimia Smart Pro now. All right, now we're back on our handheld and we can see our collection here with our new icon and fancy wallpaper. The first thing we want to do is hit the menu button and hit refresh ROMs. If you made any changes at all to the ROM list in your collection, you want to refresh the ROMs. Now when we go in, we can see that the games that we deleted are no longer showing and we have the box art now. Now we can launch any game here and it should work. As you can see, it is working just fine. All right, now let's say it doesn't work for some reason. Just make sure that all the changes that you were supposed to make in the launched file and config file are, are correct. And also, if you got your Trimia Smart Pro before April of 2024, you may need to upgrade the firmware and the stock operating system files. I'll have a guide for that coming up soon, but it's very simple to do. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments down below. Wait, that's going to be it. I hope this helped. Once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I did read every comment. And as always, hope you guys are staying safe and seeing out there. And catch you guys next time.